Well, good afternoon, and thank you, everyone. I want to begin by recognizing and thanking my co-hosts for this year's conference, Premier Andrew Furry of Newfoundland and Labrador, who's with us, and you'll hear from him in just a moment. But um, on behalf of uh, the Premier and myself, we are grateful to all of our Premiers and their representatives for making the trip to join us here in Massachusetts. Premier King of Prince Edward Island, uh, Minister Biron of Quebec, Associate Deputy Minister McGregor of Nova Scotia, and Executive Director Bro of New Brunswick. Thank you also to my fellow governors in New England, Governor Phil Scott of Vermont, Governor Janet Mills of Maine, Governor Ed Lam Ned Lamont of Connecticut, and Governor Dan McKee of Rhode Island. This conference has been a great opportunity to talk about and to share innovative work that is happening in our states. And, to, and, and provinces, and to strengthen our collective ability and commitment to lead the clean energy revolution. Last night, we also got to see our Red Sox in action and show off our love for Boston sports. Um, and I say that because it's worth emphasizing teamwork and team chemistry in any endeavor, and certainly when it comes to doing hard things, um, and achieving the goals of our clean energy revolution and the work that we've got to do, it really is about teamwork. And so I'm grateful to our New England governors and the Eastern Canadian premiers and their teams for being here for this great conference. We, um, we are here today, be and we've been meeting the last couple of days because this is about building strong economies, creating great jobs and new businesses, carving out our energy independence, and combating climate change. Uh, for example, Massachusetts is proud to partner with Quebec on the New England Clean Energy Connect project. This is something that will help us reduce greenhouse gas emissions, help move us further away from fossil fuels, uh, bring about lower prices for consumers, and strengthen the power grid. We look forward to exploring more opportunities with our friends in eastern Canada in collaboration with the other New England states. This includes, as I noted at the beginning of today's conference, opportunities to invest in offshore wind. One of our points of discussion was building out an offshore wind supply chain here in New England and Canada to achieve true energy independence and save money for our residents and businesses. We're doing this work in Massachusetts by investing in our supply chain of ports, as in Salem and New Bedford, and cable manufacturing in Somerset. We're eager to scale up to leverage our individual strengths and connect this work region-wide. We also discussed the opportunity to create consistent pathways for decarbonizing some of the hardest to reach sectors of the economy, including heavy transportation, aviation, and commercial and industrial buildings. This alignment will allow us to use the clean energy we're producing in the most effective ways possible. After a day of uh, constructive conversations, uh, I am pleased to announce that we have collectively agreed to two new resolutions between our states and provinces. Through the first re uh, resolution, we have agreed to reconvene the Northeast International Committee on Energy to pursue regional collaboration and planning on these and other energy issues. In Massachusetts, we've put real resources behind our teams partnering with other New England states. We want to extend that work to and with our neighbors in Canada. Those efforts have delivered more investment, innovative ideas, uh, and, and real progress on tough energy issues. And I know we can do even more working together as states and provinces. We will now have a consistent stream of communication between our states and provinces to discuss how we can collaborate on energy issues. And we look forward to making progress as a result on a larger scale. We also agreed to a second resolution, and that second resolution is to relaunch the Committee on Environment. We've had success with regional collaboration on energy issues. We will apply that same model to climate change adaptation, protecting our natural resources, and food security. With these two resolutions, we stand before you today stronger as a region, ready to tackle the big issues on the horizon. 
Our close ties as a region create a unique opportunity and platform for executing, for implementing a planned vision for clean energy, one that will lead the world and benefit all of our residents. And we look forward to building on the progress made today. Again, I want to thank the governors and the premiers and their teams for the hard work that has gone into this collaboration, this conference that has resulted in two significant resolutions, which we are able to announce today, which the premier and I just had the privilege of signing, and importantly, for the commitment to continued regionalization, collaboration as we work to combat climate change and solve the energy needs confronting our residents and our states and provinces. With that, I turn it now over to my co-chair, Premier Andrew Freire. Well, thank you, Governor. And uh, one of the benefits of speaking second is you don't have to go through all the acknowledgments of thanks and gratitude. So let me start by just having a blanket uh, echo of uh, gratitude and thanks to all the teams uh, for putting off an incredible couple of days. But a uh, a warm Atlantic Canadian and special thank you to the governor herself and, and her team for hosting us uh, in what has truly been an incredible backdrop with a robust policy agenda and great discussions today. Um, it's become quite clear uh, to all of us, I think, that this region, and I think it was uh, several governors actually and, and premiers today said that the region is more than uh, shared geography and shared resources, it truly is a family. And when you're tackling the complex challenges and problems that exist in the world today, including uh, changing geopolitical tensions, uh, energy demands, and how we're going to tackle the big problems of climate change, that can only be strengthened when you have a familial relationship like we do amongst us. Uh, so uh, from that perspective, from Newfoundland and Labrador's perspective, we're eternally grateful that this table exists. Uh, from a, our citizens' perspective, they, they know and appreciate that the work is being done in a, in a strategic way. Uh, too often, these policies seem transactional, and with this strategic table, they're, they're able to be more than that. They're able to be strategic and visionary to truly tackle those big, bold problems, those big, big challenges that equally represent opportunities, not just for the governments, not just for pieces of policies, but for families at their tables, they know that this set of leaders is thinking about those problems and tackling them on their behalf. Um, it's also my distinct pleasure to uh, take the torch now and um, <laughs> take the baton, if you will, and, to, and I hope everybody uh, comes to Newfoundland and Labrador uh, next year. Uh, we're uh, extremely proud to host uh, this, this uh, prestigious group uh, in my province. Uh, I have to tell you a little story about the U.S., Canada, and, and Newfoundland and Labrador in particular. Um, the weight of the meeting I'm about to describe is perhaps a bit more, a bit heavier, but it's, it'll highlight the significance of ongoing working relationships. In 1941, in, in Placentia Bay, uh, Roosevelt and Churchill, Placentia Bay is a is a big big bay in, in Newfoundland. It's uh, just off the. It's just nestled perfectly in the, in the triangle that is Newfoundland, the island in the northeast coast. Churchill and Roosevelt met in 1941 for the Atlantic Charter. The purpose of that charter was to map a path forward post-World War II. Um, and we have built uh, a strong path forward. I think anyone can, can see that in the democracies and rebuilding the world after World War II. This meeting will not carry that same weight but it will certainly create a path forward for our citizens as we tackle the significant challenges of climate change, meeting our energy demands, trying to decarbonize, tough to decarbonize industries. But I am confident that we have all the key ingredients, whether it's natural resources, the leaders that have the bold vision to accomplish it, and the citizens that will ultimately reap the awards, rewards. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we'll conclude, but first, are there any questions on topic for us? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm hopeful we'll get an economic development bill soon, and an important component of that is investment in climate technology. I think that Massachusetts 
is well poised to be a global hub for climate technology. I've said in the past that 28 out of the top 100 climate tech companies are located here in Massachusetts. We estimate the return on investment for that climate tech investment to be something on the order of 12 to 1 or 16 to 1, something in that, uh, in that vicinity. Um, and so we're very excited about it, optimistic about, uh, about getting that done with the legislature. Sure, and I'll welcome comments from my co-chair and any of the other governors and premiers. But basically, this is a very important convening that has happened every year for the last 45 years. This is the 45th annual convening of New England governors and Eastern Canadian uh, premiers. And it's an opportunity for us to come together to talk about issues of regional concern. We come from jurisdictions that each have their unique characteristics and, and qualities and things happening uh, within them. That said, there are so many um, matters of common concern and as importantly, there are areas where if we were to work regionally, and that includes by uh, nationally as well as within uh, our New England states, we're going to be that much better off, um, not just for um, uh, the regions and uh, in North America, but, but for our residents and our businesses within our own jurisdictions. And the last couple of days, we had an opportunity to host this uh, conference. And my team and I, Massachusetts, we were very proud to be able to host our, uh, our friends from Canada and from our New England states here in Massachusetts. We kicked things off with a tour at Mass Maritime Academy, which is uh, doing incredible work in research and development, in study, and in actual application and workforce training and development in so many careers related to the clean energy space. We had the opportunity in particular to focus on and discuss offshore wind. Um, today, we um, had the opportunity to come together for a number of uh, smaller uh, discussions about matters of interest, including transmission, what we're going to do, including how we're going to decarbonize um, certain sectors, and how we're going to procure energy um, and the amount of energy that we need to procure to, to meet the moment that we're in and the time ahead. And so uh, Massachusetts was proud to host this year. We will be in Newfoundland and Labrador next year for the conference, but importantly, the work of um, our offices, our teams, our staff will continue um, with regular meetings and regular work to achieve all the goals that uh, Premier Ferry outlined. Yeah, I think there are important, there are already work streams happening. I think about just what we announced, you covered it last week, that significant historic procurement of offshore wind. We're proud to be home to the country's largest utility scale offshore wind farm that's currently uh, powering homes and businesses as we speak. We announced last week with the great state of Rhode Island that we were in uh, for a significant procurement, three uh, major projects all together. And so there are different work streams in process. We have collaborations with Maine, uh, collaborations with Vermont, um, collaborations with Connecticut, um, and we have ongoing collaborations and work streams with the Canadian provinces. Everybody's got their own assets and, and, and different resources, and there are different ways um, to, um, uh, to get to where we need to be in terms of energy independence. Thank you. That, okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Thank you to our colleagues. Safe travels, all of you. Thank okay? you, Maura. Yeah, great to see you. Yeah. Thank you.